Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Ed Harris and I'm the Chief Communications Officer here at Family Equality Council. And I am pleased to have our Chief Policy Officer, Denise brogan Cater, joining us today to talk about our newly released Nevada LGBTQ Family Law Guide, which we have prepared in collaboration with Gender Justice Nevada. And we released that earlier this week. Denise is gonna walk through some of the key questions that are raised by the issues covered in the guide. Um, and I hope this is really helpful. I'm turning it over to Denise. Thank you, Ed. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. My name is, as Ted, is Denise Brogan Cater. I'm the Chief Policy Officer with the Family Equality Council. Working with state partners, we are happy to prepare and present these state specific family law guides to educate the LGBTQ and sex diverse communities about their legal rights, primarily in the area of family law. In Nevada, we are happy and proud to have partnered with Gender Justice Nevada, a statewide advocacy and anti violence organization which is dedicated to an intersectional approach to changing law, policy, and attitudes so that all Nevadans can live safely, authentically, and free from fear, violence, and mistreatment, regardless of their sex or gender identity or expression. Before I get into the substance of Nevada's Family Law Guide, which may be downloaded from our website and you can, which you can see on our final slide, I want to start with an important caveat or disclaimer one which I will repeat periodically in the next half hour. This guide does not replace and cannot be used instead of seeking qualified legal advice from an attorney licensed in the state of Nevada. Moreover, I would suggest that when looking for such an attorney, you inquire as to that lawyer's experience and expertise, both in family law matters, but also in dealing with the unique issues of LGBTQ and sex and gender diverse communities. Okay, let's get into it. As I'm sure everyone knows, marriage equality came to Nevada in 2014, predating national marriage equality by a year. As long as individuals meet the other requirements for marriage, such as age, you can marry at 18 or 16 or 17 even with a parent's permission, and Nevada of course has no residency requirement, there are no longer any gender requirements on you or the person you marry. Of course, as in all states, no member of the clergy can be forced to solemnize any marriage that is outside the teachings of their faith. Prior to marriage equality coming to Nevada, the United States Supreme Court, in a case entitled United States v. Windsor, found Section 3 of DOMA, the so-called Defensive Marriage Act, which had denied federal marriage benefits to married same-sex couples, unconstitutional. As a result, all married Nevadans now have access to all the benefits of marriage created by the federal government, as well as, of course, the state government. These include, but aren't limited to, Social Security and Veterans Administration benefits, spousal benefits for same-sex spouses of military service members, all federal tax purposes, etc. You can find out more about these benefits by going to Family Quality's website at www.familyquality.org and searching for, on after DOMA. Unfortunately, many of these federal benefits are available to married couples only. With the election of Donald Trump and the confirmation of Neil Gorsuch to the US Supreme Court, many LGBTQ people around the nation and in Nevada have raised questions about the ongoing viability of marriage equality. Right at the start, let me put your mind at ease about existing marriages. All marriages? same sex or otherwise, once legally entered, may not be undone by any action of the state or federal government. Only you or your spouse can divorce you. But it is true that members of the current administration, as well as members of the Supreme Court, have expressed the view that access to marriage by same sex couples should be available only if a particular state makes it so. As such, should one of the more progressive justices leave the court and be replaced by a justice in the mold of Gorsuch, it is possible that a challenge to marriage equality will be raised and the Obergefell decision overturned, returning access to marriage for same-sex couples back to the states. Recall again that Nevada gained access to marriage equality prior to the Obergefell ruling. Also, in reaction to the changes on the court, 
Nevada approved Assembly Joint Resolution 2, which rescinds the gender-specific language that was passed back in 2002. So even if something terrible happened and we lost nationwide marriage equality, Nevadans would still enjoy the freedom to marry the person of their choice, regardless of their gender. Now let's turn from marriage equality to thinking about family formation. LGBTQ Nevadans form their families in a variety of ways, each with its own legalities. Adoption is a very common way for our families to be formed. It can take many forms, including one parent adopting the legal child of their partner, called step-parent adoption for married couples. It's a relatively new pathway to create legal ties for same-sex couples. And of course, we understand that many object to the name, rightfully saying that they are not their child's step-parent. But as I'll explain later, people should really just try to ignore the name and avail themselves of this critical legal protection. Then there is second parent adoption for unmarried couples. There is no Nevada law that either provides for or explicitly prohibits second parent adoption, but case law does seem to support the practice. Second parent adoptions create a legally recognized relationship between a second parent and a child without changing the legal relationship, rights, and responsibilities of the currently existing legal parent. And of course, it can be both parents adopting at the same time, called joint adoption, and finally, lots of single people adopt. But let me be clear, nothing, absolutely nothing, will protect your family like a court order. Even if you object to the name step-parent, Family Equality Council encourages you to hold your nose and avail yourself of this option. There is no better protection for everyone involved than a legal adoption. It protects the rights of the child, creating legal ties to both parents, and it protects the legal rights of the parent who previously had none. And that right is protected everywhere you travel. Often, a child will be born to a couple during their marriage. And regardless of the gender of the spouse, the hospital will likely put the name of the spouse on the child's birth certificate. This is called the parental presumption. The parental presumption exists in Nevada law as the presumption of paternity, assuming, of course, that the spouse of the woman giving birth is a cisgender male and the likely biological father of the child. And, of course, it is very important to have your name on the child's birth certificate it is really the daily marker and indication of your legal right to make decisions on behalf of your child. School enrollment, medical decision making, passport applications, etc., all rely on the ability to produce evidence of legal parentage. But, and this is really important, a birth certificate is not proof of legal parentage in a courtroom. If you are biologically related to your child and your name is on the birth certificate, your legal relationship to your child is secure, but in all other circumstances, such as in a same-sex marriage where one of the parents is not biologically related to the child, there is an inherent risk in not having a court order, such as an adoption decree. In such a circumstance, your legal parentage may not survive an attack on it. For this reason, Family Quality Council, again, strongly recommends that everyone avail themselves of the ability to obtain a court order declaring their legal parentage. Other ways that our families are formed are through the intervention of assisted reproduction technologies, including surrogacy. In Nevada, at least five different methods of assisted reproduction are governed by the law on gestational agreements. These include, though not limited to, interuterine, intrauterine infemination, donation of eggs, donation of embryos, in vitro fertilization and transfer of embryos, and intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Nevada law allows gestational surrogacy, a process in which a surrogate carries a fetus to term on behalf of the intended parents, but does not contribute her own egg to the pregnancy. Gender neutral language is used throughout the governing statutory provisions, establishing parental rights, determining the scope of relationship between donors, gestational carriers, parents, and intended parents. 
These provisions in Nevada law set out the proper procedures through which to obtain pre- and post-birth orders from the relevant courts. The law governing gestational agreements is lengthy, and we don't have the time here today to review all of its requirements. Therefore, again, we strongly recommend that you seek out a qualified LGBTQ affirming and knowledgeable attorney experienced in the area of surrogacy law. I will, however, say a couple of words about donors, surrogates, and intended parents. Nevada law defines a donor as a person with dispositional control of eggs, sperm, or embryos who provides the eggs, sperm, or embryos to another person or gestation and relinquishes all present and future parental and inheritance rights and obligations to any resulting child. It is important to note that such donors are explicitly not the parent of a child conceived through assisted reproduction, which Nevada law defines as simply a method of causing pregnancy other than sexual intercourse. Unusual in the country, Nevada law does allow for the surrogate to be paid for reasonable compensation, in addition to reimbursement, without limitation, for all medical, legal, and other professional expenses associated with the gestational contract. In order to protect the rights of the surrogate, the law requires her to be represented by her own legal counsel in order for a gestational contract to be enforceable. Intended parent means a person, married or unmarried, who manifests the intent, as required by statute, to be legally bound as the parent of a child resulting from assisted reproduction. As with the surrogate, the intended parents must have their own independent legal counsel in order for the contract to be enforceable. Shifting away from family formation, let's talk about discrimination and protection therefrom in the state of Nevada for LGBTQ people and families. Nevada is one of only a few states to have fairly strong protections against discrimination on the basis of both sexual orientation and gender identity in employment, housing, and public accommodations. In some instances, Nevada state law actually provides more protections to, N to Nevada LGBTQ citizens than federal law. For example, some of the statewide protections Nevada provides include prohibiting the firing of LGBTQ people, denial of housing, LGBTQ people, refusal of service in a restaurant or pulling in a school simply because someone is LGBTQ. In May of 2017, this year, the Nevada governor signed SB 188 into law, which provides comprehensive discrimination protections for LGBTQ individuals. The act provides working definitions for sexual orientation and gender identity or expression that are applicable to all those anti-discrimination provisions already present throughout the Nevada Revised Statutes. These discrimination and protections were extended to areas previously lacking explicit LGBTQ protections, including the Nevada system of higher education, housing assistance programs, commercial advertising, certain nonprofit organizations, and more. Discrimination still exists against LGBTQ people and our families. And the simple act of filing an amended W-4 with your employer showing you've married a person of the same sex, for example, could inadvertently out you, leading to discrimination in the workplace or even the loss of a job. However, Chapter 613 of Nevada's legal code, which governs employment practices, has been amended twice to extend discrimination protections to LGBTQ individuals. In 1999, Nevada AB, 311 added sexual orientation as a basis of prohibited discrimination. And then in 2011, Nevada AB 2011 or 211 added a ban on discrimination by employers and labor organizations based on gender identity or expression. The Nevada Equal Rights Commission is responsible for handling and investigating claims of employment discrimination. If you have been denied or fired from employment 
because of your sexual orientation or gender identity, it is best to file a claim with the Nevada Equal Rights Commission. Chapter 118 of the Nevada Revised Statute, also known as the Nevada Fair Housing Law, was amended in 2011, adding pro prohibitions on discrimination in housing and certain other transactions involving real property on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity or expression. The Fair Housing Law is opening declaration of public policy of the state also calls for the equal opportunity of all Nevada citizens to inherit, purchase, lease, rent, sell, hold, or convey real property without gender identity or sexual orientation-based discrimination. So if you have experienced discrimination with regards to housing or related items like residency privileges or interest rates or insurance rates, because of your sexual orientation or gender identity, you should contact the Nevada Equal Rights Commission and file a complaint. Public accommodations are generally defined as entities, both public and private, that are used by the public. Examples include retail stores, restaurants, educational institutions, recreational facilities, etc. It's important to note that private clubs and religious institutions are generally exempt from this definition. Chapter 651 of the Nevada Legal Code governs matters related to public accommodations. Each of the sections governing the equal enjoyment of places of public accommodation, which is the title of that chapter, has been amended twice in order to extend protections to LGBTQ individuals. In 2009, the legislature passed SB 207, which added sexual orientation to the list. And in 2011, gender identity or expression was added with the enactment of SB 331. Nevada does not require employers to provide paid family leave. However, the Federal Family and Medical Leave Act, known as FMLA, entitles eligible employees of covered employers to take unpaid, job-protected leave for specified family and medical reasons. Eligible employees are entitled to up to 12 unpaid work weeks of leave in a one-year period for the birth of a child and to care for the newborn child within one year of birth. The placement of the, with the employee of a child for adoption or foster care and to care for a newly placed child within one year of placement. To care for the employee's spouse, child, or parent who has a serious health condition. A serious health condition that makes the employee unable to form the essential functions of his or her job, and the un, any unqualifying exigency <laughs> circumstance arising out of the fact that the employee's son, spouse, daughter, parent is a covered military member or on covered active duty. FMLA applies to all public agencies, whether they're state, local, or federal, and all local education agencies like schools. Family and Medical Leave Act also applies to private sector employees who employ 50 or more employees for more than 20 weeks in the current or preceding calendar year. Now, when it comes to changes of name and gender, gender, the state of Nevada has one of the most progressive policies in the nation. Transgender individuals born in Nevada may request an amended birth certificate to reflect their true sex and name by submitting an application to the state registrar that provides the following two documents. An applicant's own notarized statement providing their correct gender and formally requesting a change to their birth certificate. A supplemental affidavit, which is a notarized statement affirming the requested correction by any individual with firsthand knowledge of the applicant's gender whether through personal, familial, medical, or professional relationship with the applicant. So therefore, unlike most states, neither a court order nor proof from a medical professional is required in order to make a request to correct the gender and name listed 
on an individual's birth certificate. Additionally, the Nevada legislature removed a prerequisite in May of this year, May 2017, that required an individual to publish one's former and new names in a newspaper before being able to petition for a name change. Very progressive law. Nevada state law includes sexual orientation and gender identity or expression in its protections for victims of hate crimes. Nevada hate crime laws provide for an increase in penalties for those defendants where there is a separate finding of fact that the crime committed was motivated by hate based upon the victim's actual or perceived race, religion, color, national origin, ancestry, age, disability, gender, sexual orientation, or gender identity or expression. Okay, so now we want to talk about some of the documents that families can put together uh, to protect themselves and their families. All of these are listed in our guide, as well as uh, links to where you can download such documents in the state of Nevada. Uh, and I would again encourage everyone to always reach out to qualified LGBTQ affirming and knowledgeable attorney in help with preparing these documents. The last will and testament is a document that provides for the passage of assets um, from one person to another upon their death. In the last will and testament, you can you can provide for things like who will be the uh, guardian of your children. You can provide for what happens to things as small as your wedding ring or uh, other small assets. The advanced directive for healthcare is a document that enables a healthcare provider to understand what your wishes are and also to allow an advocate on your behalf to speak for you in the circumstance that you cannot speak for yourself. If there is some reason that you are uh, incapacitated and unable to make medical decisions for yourself, this document allows another person to step in that role. Now that normally will also fall legally to a spouse. But of course, we can't always predict when we will run into a person who objects to same-sex marriages and who doubts the legal relationship between you and your spouse in a time of crisis like being in the hospital. So we recommend that you always have an advanced directive for health care makes your wishes known, and gives the power to your designate um, in addition to relying on the underlying law that allows you to make medical decisions. And then powers of attorney. Powers of attorney can be very broad or very narrow as you wish. They are simply tools used to designate some power that you have to another person. They can be very broad financial powers of attorney, which enable somebody to make decisions for you on the basis of uh, buying and selling stocks, buying and selling real estate. Uh, they are often used, for example, when uh, one of the partners or spouses is traveling and the other uh, partner staying in place has to conduct some transaction. And that first partner can't be there, a power of attorney will allow you to uh, act uh, on behalf of, of the partner that's not there. They can be very specific or very narrow. So again, I would, um, very broad or very narrow. So again, I would recommend that you consult with an attorney. As I mentioned before, you can download your copy of the Nevada LGBTQ Family Law Guide from our website, the link is on your screen. 
And I would like to thank you for joining us today. This concludes our presentation.